Hello and a very warm welcome to the city of Nanning, the capital of Guangxi province in southwest China. A city where ancient architecture happily coexists with the modern world. Located on the north bank of the Yong River, Nanning, which is also known as the Green City, is a thriving modern metropolis. But all this week we have been here at the Guangxi Sports Centre Gymnasium for the 16th staging of the Total BWF Sudaman Cup, the World Mixed Team Championships in the sport of badminton. 31 countries from across the globe gathered here in Nanning for this prestigious biannual event. Those 31 teams were divided, according to their players' world rankings, into four groups or divisions, with the top 12 nations all in Group 1. And it's only a team from this group that can actually win the Sudaman Cup. And this is the prize awaiting the winning team on Sunday, the magnificent Sudaman Cup trophy, 80 centimetres high. It's made of solid silver, plated with 22 karat gold. The body of the cup in the form of a shuttle, which is surmounted by a replica of the Borobudur Temple. It really is one of the most iconic trophies in the world of sport. Well, over the first four days, we had round-robin group play. We are now at the knockout stage. The first two quarterfinals were played yesterday evening, and the big news is that the defending champions, Korea, were beaten 3-1 by Thailand. So Thailand threw to the semi-final of the Sudaman Cup for just a third time. And for the first time ever in the history of the Sudaman Cup, the defending champions have been beaten before the semi-final stage. This morning, we have the two quarterfinals from the bottom half of the draw. Here on court one, we have Japan against Malaysia. And then this evening, here on court one again, it's the group two final, France against Canada. Well, I can tell you the teams for our quarterfinal arrived here at the venue just a short while ago. The Malaysian team have the reigning world new champion, but she isn't selected today. That is a big surprise. So they are strong though in men's doubles and mixed doubles, so we're hoping for a very close tie. It is the quarterfinal, Japan against Malaysia. The Japanese team who started the competition as the number one seeds reached the final of the Sudaman Cup four years ago. The last time the event was staged here in China. Malaysia are today trying to reach a second semi-final, 10 years after their first in Guangzhou in 2009. This year they have a relatively young team and are missing for various reasons all five players who won Olympic silver medals in Rio de Janeiro three years ago. Well, as is the case before all these team ties, the traditional huddle of both teams, the Japanese team very strong right across all five disciplines. So each tie in the Sudaman Cup competition is the best of five matches, one of each of the five disciplines, but unlike the group stage, once the tie is run here at the knockout stage, any remaining matches are not contested. So the order of play is crucial. And this is the order that the referee has chosen for this morning's tie. We're starting with men's doubles. And for Japan, it's the World Championship silver medalists, Komura and Sonoda up against Ong and Tio. And then women's singles and the 2017 world champion, Nozomi Okuhara against Sonia Chia, who played so well against England. Then it's men's singles and the reigning world champion, the left-handed Kento Momota, up against the hugely talented youngster, Lee Si Jia. Uh, then women's doubles and more reigning world champions for Japan, Matsumoto and Nagahara, up against Chao and Lee. And if we get down to the fifth match, it is the All England champions from last year, Yuto Watanabe and Arisa Higashino, up against Tankye Mei and Lai Pei Jing. Well, with men's doubles, the first match of this quarterfinal tie, a chance for us to look at the two pairs. And those, of course, are the career win-loss records. But as far as the Japanese pair is concerned, they've been in three finals this year from eight tournaments. As far as the Malaysians are concerned, one final from nine tournaments. So from that, it would suggest that the Japanese pair 
are in better form than the Malaysians. This will be the third meeting between these two pairs, and as you can see, the previous two have both been won by the Malaysians, which of course leads me straight into the obvious question to the man sitting next to me, Morton Frost. I thought this was a surprise selection. It's the first time that this Malaysian pair has been selected as a pair, but they do have this two-love record against the top Japanese pair. They do have, and then, as you say, it's interesting. They're taking advantage of the fact that they have this good head-to-head -head against the Japanese pair. So let's see how it goes. It's a tall order for them. First match straight into the quarterfinal. That's not easy. It certainly isn't easy at all. But uh, strange things can happen in these team matches. And once a team has got momentum, perhaps that carries through to the next match. Who knows? Uh, this is uh, Thieu Yi Yi, turned 26 last month. Born in Lua in Johor. And he and his partner currently 21 on the world ranking. But they did spend six weeks at number 16. Uh, that was a couple of years ago, so September of 2017. Should be said that they've played with different partners in the interim period, which is why their world ranking dropped lower. Ong Yu Sin is uh, 24 years of age, born in the ancient city of Malacca. And as I was telling you, they've been in one final this year. That was the Malaysian Masters lost out to the world number ones, Gideon and Sukamolio in the final. But on their way to that final, they beat their opponents of today. Now, that is a little misleading because, as we said, they weren't selected as a pair, but Tio Yi Yi was selected for Tuesday's match against India, playing with Aaron Chia, and they beat Atri and Reddy. So he has played in this stadium already. So to Takeshi Komora, 29 years of age, born in Karatsu City and he and his partner enjoying their eighth week in total. Their third different spell at their career high of number two. Keiko Sonoda, also 29 years of age, uh, born in Kumamoto Prefecture. They won the Singapore Open. This Japanese pair lost in the final of Germany and the Malaysian Super 750 event. Now, they've played one match uh, that was a couple of days ago in the evening uh, against Thailand when Japan won 4 1. They beat Kedron and Pua Puapet. Christian Johannesson of Denmark is our umpire for this one, and Victor Wong from Hong Kong, the service judge. So the Malaysian coaching bench. Paulus Fierman looking a little bit nervous. There's Rosak, the, Rosak, the other one. The man talking, Park Jubon. And Tan Kim He, former Malaysian player, who has now joined the Japanese coaching team. That makes it interesting dynamics, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> And we have one more coming up in mixed doubles if we get that far. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, they got Jeremy Gunn on the uh, right, Japanese side. Malaysia, Malaysian as well. And on my left, Japan, represented by Takeshi Kamura and Keigo Sonada. Malaysia to serve, Tio Yi Keigo Sonada. Level. Play. Oh, oh. So Malaysia getting this first oh. match of the quarter-final tie. The men's doubles underway. Oh. So the man serving. Oh. The man who played with Karen Chia against India. Two. Have any theories as to why they split their regular pairs for that match, Morton? I think they possibly feel that if they're going to play one top pair, maybe Tui is adding in 
with Aaron Cha as well, and both of them having sublime technique. And I think perhaps that's why they chose to play that team. They, they've done it uh, previously in, uh, in Thomas Kopp as well. Or director of sport? What's the title in I Malaysia now? I think it's um, perhaps technical director. Technical director. actually already drawing my attention to the fact that uh, I suspect the two Malaysian players, Tui and Yu Sin, they really favour the fact that the attack from the two Japanese is quite a flat attack. When they're smashing, it's quite flat smashes. They're not playing these smashes steep. As and when they play other pairs that's attacking more steeply, they are in much more trouble in their defence. That was a steep one. That was a steep one, but also with a very nice angle. Uh, Kimura. Yeah, it was a short lift, so there was a definite opportunity to go for that. They, they try to really gain initiative and, and be very aggressive, and so far the Malaysian pair has uh, withstanding that pressure very nicely. Um, we will also see uh, Tiwi Yi try to challenge uh, Kamura, Kamura the net a lot, playing his tricky shots and all delayed and uh, deceptive shots. So it will be a fight between the two around the net as well. Yeah. Third shot in the uh, service situation. Oh, yes. See, that was a fine example of a much more steep smash, and again really well placed on the forehand side of Wanu Sin, but that was really well played. The lift was still short, but uh, a lot longer than the, the previous one. But that's what the two Japanese have to do. They have to play much steeper attack. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's going for it. See, that's the challenge yeah. straight away. Tui is blocking it back despite the fact that Kamura is standing there, and that's what he wants to do. stockings on his legs. We were making notes last night when China was playing Chen Long against Victor Anderson. Yes. First time in years I haven't seen Chen Long wearing his uh, calf muscle 
That's true. Compression yeah, stockings. I was on the other court. So yeah. Yes, uh, of course, he was catching the corner of my eye. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they wear these to to keep the. Well, why do they wear these? It's blood, a, blood circulation. Blood circulation and uh, better recovery. Oh, good return. Well, to get that back, did Sonoda. It's, it's, uh, it's a while ago, but still I feel it's very becoming to say that uh, it looks good on TUE, he's lost about 10 kilos. Yeah. It happened last year, but he, he's so much fitter than what he used to be. Yeah, clearly. Fighting spirit. What a rally. Brilliant. Oh, that's good play. Brilliant. How did he control that? He did well to get it back, but he played the perfect shot. He did. And you seen here on all four. Malaysia go to the mid-game interval with a five-point advantage. What a good start by Ong and Tio. Defense, yeah. Sana angin lagi angin. That's why yang tadi boleh kontrol outside. Yeah. Sekarang simple. Yang tadi kan dia ada receiving tekan you punya body. Yang saya cakap you body jangan panjang. Bodinya bagi half sini. Kalau you bodinya panjang, you tadi keluar. Yeah. Dia pasti jab. Pasti jab. Cuma tadi memang quality you punya naik. Ya, terus satu lagi ya. Kalau you ada buka buat saya pergi dekat dia kan, sini, you you lurus dia kan kamu harus suka tekan masuk kan. You bagi belakang lagi, belakang cuma tadi ada bagi tengah jadi agak susah jangan pernah ambil. Ya. Atau kalau mau you tiba tiba jab cross flat mesti ada tekan. Ya, fokus terus ya. Ya, sini. Did you pick up enough bahasa during your two no. stints in Malaysia to, to no. get any of that? I must say I've been too lazy on that. <laughs> they made it so easy for me. Everybody speaks English, so... Uh, um, OK, no, you're forgiven. No, no need. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm excusing myself. <laughs> All the time. Challenge Kamora at the net. And Kamora really has to step one step forward and try stopping that. But apart from these two steep smashes, I don't think the Japanese combination have won one single smash in, the, in this opening so far. Oh, 
this is getting uh, to an order nowhere. The smashes straight at the body, no angle to it. shots. It's actually six straight points. But so far the Japanese uh, combination has not been able to hurt the Malaysian combination defensively at all. No, and I think the other thing with the Japanese pair, I always think of them as a pair that loves to play at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, 110. Uh, 110, <laughs> yes. And uh, whether it's the conditions or whether it's the shuttles, we just haven't seen that style at all so far this week. It, it hasn't been possible. Well, we saw the men's doubles uh, last <laughs> night as well between uh, China and Denmark. Well, it's a long, winding one, and they yeah. couldn't really kill it. There are lots and lots of clears and lifts because none of the two parties could kill it. No. but the idea was great. Yeah. Well, when it's so short, look at... Oh, we can't see. I was going to say his, his feet. Yes, a well inside the double service line. I would have thought that's one of the few opportunities, actually, just to go... Centre, perhaps. Centre, yeah. yeah. It's gone long. It's called in. Oh, it's called in! My goodness. We go. What does Hawkeye say? Yeah, it was it. I'm on the line. play so far in this opening game and I know they reached the final of the Malaysian Masters Super 500 but that was the first time they'd ever been past a quarter-final in either a Super Series tournament or a World Tour event. Now I'm watching them today and they're destroying the World Championship silver medalists in fact two-time World Championship medalists because uh, the Japanese pair had a bronze medal as well before their silver at the last World Championship. Why isn't this pair, why hasn't this pair been doing well regularly on the World Tour? I think, um, I think you touched on it just before. Um, it is a heavy hole to play in. And that favours Ong Yusin, because his defence is normally not as strong as what we see today. And when they get into windy conditions or faster conditions, his defence is a little bit under par, if you can say okay. that. That was the reason why he was not chosen to play the Thomas Cop last year in 2018. He was actually not even in the team. Mm. Wow. 
Well, later on, we're going to have a similar situation if we get that far. The reigning world champions in the women's doubles won the world title and before they'd been in the Uber Cup squad. Yeah. They didn't go to the Uber Cup squad, so they this is their first Sudaman Cup. Never played a Uber Cup match either. Yeah, that's extraordinary. Well, what a fantastic start here for the two Malaysians. We all need a little bit of luck at times. awareness that Kamora was committed to his yes. forehand defence. He was. Yeah, but it, shows, it also shows that uh, it's really, really hard for Kamora at the net when they're having this attacking situation to get into it, to intercept, because what's coming from the back from Sonoda is simply not having quality enough. He hits and hits and hits, but there's not enough quality, which means that uh, Kamora is more or less redundant at the front. Mm. Well, you said it a moment ago, Martin. Good start by the Malaysians. They're just two points away from the opening game. doubles it's been a, many years ago but this is definitely in favor of uh, the Japanese pair because that's one of the other things that if you can say anything despite the fact that uh, Tiwi has lost 10 kilos fitness is probably still uh, an issue for him there's another challenge here from Sonoda And when Tiwi gets a little bit tired, he takes a lot of chances. Oh, that was a good challenge. Well done. But this rally could possibly favour the Japanese in the long run. Of course, yeah. they're not going to win this opener game. But in the long run, maybe that can take the sting off the Malaysian pair. Well, first game point saved. So it is over. 12 20. Yeah, I thought it because it was 19, wasn't it? The challenge was at 19 because I said two points away from the opening game. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's actually 12-19. 12, 12, 19. than that. Now we've got game point opportunities. 20, game point Malaysia. 
Oh, that's a good return and serve from Tui And the only game to Malaysia. 21-13 in 21 minutes. It was the angle of shot that he created, which was so impressive. <laughs> 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 and so involved when their teammates are on court. Never really see that in individual competition, even no. though they might be supporting their teammates. Yeah, but when always playing. a lot of players will be missing because the, the fact game. that uh, they have to concentrate on their own matches and so on. So maybe there will be one or two or three supporting whoever is playing and the rest is uh, preparing for the next match. Yes. So Malaysia. One game to the good in this opening match of the quarter-final tie. So, Morton, I've got to ask you, because you made a comment in the opening game saying that Takeshi Kimura is almost redundant at the front of the court. Yes. How do they get him involved? What have they got to do, the Japanese pair, to turn this match around? I think they have to push him more forward when Tui is challenging him at the net. He must not be able to play these block shots the net from a low position as what he's doing now. And Kimura must be on top. This is actually one of the first times we see Kimura get into it, an interception at the net. Then there have to be better quality from Sonoda from the back in order to get Kimura into it at the front. And perhaps, you know, focus much more on steepness than trying to focus on power because power is getting him nowhere well taken. Well yeah. taken. but the variation here from two uh, sorry for from on you sin with the drop shot this uh, that was not the one it was the previous one is setting it all up yeah I'm pretty certain. So Morton, you've already talked about the fact that EE has lost a lot of weight, yes. fitter than he used to be. Yes. But I have to ask you about the head, because he's got tattooed on his forearm, yes. believe, yes. which to me says that he obviously has doubts because he <laughs> has to remind himself with this tattoo Keep believing in yourself. He's, he's a lovely guy. Is he? I, he's a very, very nice guy. And um, 
He's, he's a hard worker, but uh, he's one of those guys that it's come easy. He's got such a beautiful technique, and he's got to learn to do the grinding stuff as well. Yeah. And so often when it really gets tough, he, he makes some quite bad decisions and, you know, fancy shots and all that. But I think with experience, that might disappear. Okay. So he believes, but he doesn't have the mental discipline to keep it. Mental discipline is yeah. a wonderful word yeah. in, this, in this case. Really good. went for it. That's a lovely block. Oh, he was going off to change the bracket. <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> on his way out. He was on his way out and they hit back to him. Oh, I better just play this with a broken racket first. Here yes. we go. Off he goes. Oh, no, better play one more. <laughs> oh, but that's wonderful, wonderful placement, wasn't it? It is, it is. Final shot, I think, from Ong Yu Sin. Was yeah, it was a good smash from yeah. Ong Yu Sin. He wasn't right on top of the net there. But it was better. Yeah. in, in that oh, rally. My goodness. Misunderstanding. That is, I don't think I've ever seen it with this Japanese pair. Both totally left it for the other. It's like women's doubles. You know, a clear into the centre of the court and they just simply left it. We sometimes see that issue with a left and a right hander, but no. rarely yeah, with two right-handers. With two right-handers. There's usually a clear understanding. The one that's slightly on the cross-court yes. takes the one down the middle. The one that, who would play with uh, a, not forehand. a forehand, not around the head action. Yes. That was... Well... That's the first for everything. Yeah. Well, I think the Japanese have opted for... Uh, clever tactics now because they are trying to to really outlast the Malaysian game. They have decided that they are not fighting for the initiative as hard as what they did in the early stages of the first game. But they are giving initiative away and then say, okay, we will defend it. Yeah. And then make it a, as long as possible. But good play here by Yusin. I can see that's pretty sound tactic because in the open game, I mean, their attacking play was getting them nowhere. 
Yeah, and they were just opening up for counter attacks. Yeah. And that was what uh, Tiwi completely exploited in the first game. Seven, six. wanted to go and tell down the umpire said no ah. last two rallies from the Japanese pair have been spashes or half spashes in between the two Malaysians and they've both been hesitant both times yes but the last one here was extremely flat by uh, Sonoda. He got away with it. It's going wide. Yep. Mura had the chance there. Couldn't finish it. And this is obviously a poor lift. Mm, he knows it. Look at him. Oh, that's oh. <laughs> oh, that's just delightful, isn't it? Almost seemed to do a skip as he jumped there. <laughs> He's very quick, and then of course got this very quick action with his arm. And it's uh, fooling the opponent. Enough on the third shot, not enough pressure from Takashi Kimura. It is the Japanese combination who have the advantage at mid-game interval. Uh, but it's only a two-point advantage, but considering they've lost the opening game, they'll take any advantage, I'm pretty sure of that. Okay. Simple. Game simple. Defend, defend. Yeah. Game simple, I heard Tan Kim Ho saying. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah. Oh, you see, not over here, not here, not, not control. Here, here, very good. Okay, okay. okay. remember, uh, no, here, no, no, no. Now we attack. Cannot kill. Defense. 20 seconds. Okay, defense. Okay, defense. Okay. Okay. But defense. Okay. 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 There you can see the body art on the left forearm of Tui Yi. Yeah, the inside. Yeah.
Boy trying it again. Well, this is now where the inner discipline is coming in. Can you see that? The mental, yeah. yeah. Lack he's, of he, discipline. He's, he was uh, missing that uh, interception before at the net, and now he missed this drop shot as well. He's got to stay extremely focused. two against one situation again yeah but uh, Kimura wasn't moving he wasn't adjusting his base position at the front of the court at all he was just stationary no wonder he was being cut out of the run yeah I agree with you on that as well go through to his partner Sonoda not this one that one that one there yes what to do in the heat of the moment exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> try to get it back yeah oh, oh, I feel 14. that the uh, Japanese is getting a better grip on the match two or three points going to be crucial for the Malaysians. Was he totally committed again to the forehand defence? Yes, he was. He was first. He was on the backhand defence, and then he swapped to be completely 100% on the forehand. And then again, it came into the centre, and that's where he got caught. Yeah. charging into the net more now. A lot of the players now, when they get caught on the backhand, are doing a full pirouette. I don't know if they feel it's quicker to get back round rather than turning their back and then having to go yeah, The normal way around. Yes, exactly. Back again. Whether it's just done to please us viewers aesthetically. <laughs> It always looks very spectacular, doesn't it? This is circus like. <laughs> <laughs> Move. It is for the second game. Yeah. Five point advantage at this stage is usually significant. 
But it's more that the pace from uh, the Malaysian combination has dropped as well. It has, hasn't it? Tiu Yi would have taken that one before in the beginning, but now he's uh, not touching them. So he's also slowing down a bit. Yeah. Ready. I thought he was leaving that. <laughs> I thought, what it a was, dis disastrous ready. decision. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. It would have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a super angle. That shuttle landed in front of the front service line. Doubles. And we're playing with Vivian Ho. Yeah, I think they were selected for Monday's match against Russia, weren't they? Yes, they played that one. I do beg your pardon, that was that's rubbish. It was against China. They swapped them. I know um, Chao Ming Ma won then. Malaysia played against China or India. It must have been one of those two. It certainly wasn't Russia. Yeah, um, we can come back to that. But I know that they shared the honours in, the, yeah. in the women's doubles. Yeah. They played against China. Yeah, I think it was. It was the first day, wasn't it? Because uh, Chao Mei Kwan and... Uh, Li Meng Yang beat uh, India in the deciding match. The fifth match, yeah. yeah. So this has suddenly become all very close. Yeah, 18-13. Were... Yeah. Now just one point in it. Go! And all level. And now anything can happen. So this now six straight points from the Malaysians to go in the lead. Nineteen all. You'd think I'd learn, wouldn't you, after all these years when <laughs> I say five point lead should be. That should be enough. <laughs> but I said it as well. In all honesty, I I, I couldn't see 18 13 no. that they could lose that as how the game went. Good defense. did well to keep their concentration there. That's amazing, Get. Yeah, that stomach all the way. <laughs> yeah, very, very lucky he didn't slide into the net post there. Yeah, the 
these neck posts are better than others. These ha have all rounded edges. So again, Paul's opportunity. Oh, nine judges going to be called back on. Will we have a bit of time? I remember and we were talking on the bus the other evening, late into the night when we were coming back from the stadium, yes. about James Blake, tennis player, who broke his neck sliding into the net post. Oh. And that's, that's why I get a little bit nervous. So game point opportunity. An extra points required until there's a two point winning margin. Opportunities. I was sure he wanted to go for ankle. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, that that's is brilliant. brilliant. From Takeshi Kamara. Well, I'm sure most neutrals would love to see another game of this men's doubles. It's great entertainment. Second game point opportunity. There's a couple of big gulps of air there from Tiwini. So will it be third time lucky for the Japanese pair? Third game point opportunity. from a very low position. There you see, and still clipping the top of the tape. Oh. Kamora just waiting for it. Got it back. Yeah, 
thing was that <coughs> Tui had to two chances at the net for interception. He blocked up both of them. And he feels the tension and he's blaming himself as and when you see the dive here from Ong Yu Sin. Then after that, you can see that Tui Yi is blaming himself for not going for one of them. Well, there's the fine balance, isn't it? Because we were talking earlier about him trying to do too much when it's tight and keeping the mental discipline, but then he went too passive. He went too far the other way. Two chances. Blocked both of them. Fourth game point opportunity for Japan. Good serve there by Kamura. Really good. And it's long. And a fourth opportunity is coming off. Oof, could have challenged that. Crikey! Kamara. Look how short his racket grip is. Yeah. Fifth Get a better whip that way with that short grip. Fifth opportunity now for Japan to send this to a deciding game. Brilliant, brilliant. What a shot from Tui Yi. Oh, he said in the very early stages what delightful skills Yi Yi had got. And he's shown us pretty much his full repertoire today. He's played some beauties. to receive have to be very much aware of that flick serve that might come in. Yeah, the Malaysians have been flicking a lot towards the latter stages of this second game. Got to be careful now. Got them get the racket up, not getting fooled. Here we are. More time, blocking it. Oh, well, he kicks his racket away in frustration on you, Singh. Look, the lift was short. Oh, he's such a calm man, normally, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Sixth game point opportunity now for Japan. It's one game all, and look at the reaction of Ong Yu Sin. And for Malaysian fans, that might be a little concerning. But how well they did to catch back up yeah. and, in fact, lead from. 13, 18 down. We thought the, the Japanese pair were cruising. It turned into a thriller. It did. That Took six in a row. Yeah. So one game all. 26, 24. You have to say, boleh dua, 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 game, kan? You mantama berjuang lagi sekarang, ya? You all out. First, ya, you tengok masa you attack, ya, eh, apa, buat dari defense, you jangan langsung mau kantor attack. Bagi dulu dia sampai dia out position itu yang kalau out position baru attack. Yang tadi poin ketinggalan ya kan, karena you terlalu mau satu peng masuk. Nah itu yang dia belum follow. Itu yang jangan sedikit ya. You masih bagi dia kan sampai dia out position baru. Ya. ya. Terus ingat you masa dekat belakang kadang-kadang itu yang cakap ya, macam tadi tek-tek bagi dia ke tengah aja. 
jangan bagi dekat 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 uh, itunya kamura bagi dekat tengah terus ya padang kalau dia masalah 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 lagi tag ya tengok bolanya agak tak sampai belakang yuk agak maju sedikit ya nah dia kan ada one zero eh zero zero set many side oke okay. oke okay. oke okay. oke okay. the idea is smash nice many many center ya レシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバーシュチュレシバー
but we saw in the group stage Japan only beat Russia. 3-2. Three 3-2, two. Three two, coming from 1-2 down. Anything can happen in these team they competitions. very shaken. Yeah. And of course, the shoot, as we always say, don't get ahead of ourselves. But no. Malaysia win this opening match. Uh, Sonia Cha played three games against the Okuhara last time they played, lost 21-15 in the deciding game. And uh, of course, Okuhara is major favorite to win it yeah but still shows that Sonia Cha might have a small chance with all the backing of having won the first match in the tie and yes. all the backing from the players yeah. from behind and all that you never know what's going to happen and, and that's why the order of play is so important and the rules have changed it used to be a set order that had to be played in order of preference now it's entirely up to the referee's discretion it's, it's a great responsibility to have. it is it's a real responsibility that's a nice shot there from Yi. emphasize the point that you were making earlier somebody's got to challenge him on the japanese side of the court when he goes forward and in fact kimura was backing off there yes the lift was he's leaping from half court there huh? yeah not even up on his defense I think his defense has not been so good today and especially when he's trying to cover his forehand side he's made a lot of mistakes and here's another one there that one becomes a mistake yeah well taken that time Frank. do you think nerves sometimes means that the player defensively uh, has to sort of commit to one side or the other because I mean I can remember a coach saying to me the one thing you've got to do have the racket out in front of you stay relaxed so that you can either go to the forehand defense or the backhand defense and if your arm is a bit tense then you don't have that option and therefore you've got to you've commit. got to guess basically yeah. but the, the players today are, are much much stronger in defending the forehand side with the backhand as in our days they're stronger doing it speak for yourself Martin. i know i know it was one of your favorite shots it was <laughs> yes i know but in general you were just tempting me into saying that weren't yes you? i knew that i knew it was coming but you... in general yeah okay i accept <laughs> But it was one of your absolute favorite shots. Yeah, well taken. Now, three point advantage, and I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early to it's say. It's too early. Yeah. yeah. But there are signs. There are definite signs. You, you sense what I was sensing, definitely.
Another flick. Yeah, he was serve. caught, still opted to hit as hard as he could, but as she said, it turned out to almost go upwards. Yeah. expecting there uh, in the setting. And we just saw one to nine when I just cleared up that he used the coach. Yeah, well taken. It's a different title to your steam team. Yes, I was technically going to say. Yeah. There's a lot of court to cover for Sonoda there. He's got no chance. So 10 all. This point will decide who has the advantage at the change of ends. And the advantage is with Japan. I think the Malaysians might be flicking a little too often. I thought Sonoda was really waiting for that one. He was one. waiting for that one here. He was really ready. And that's what I said uh, in, this, in the uh, extra points that uh, they got to be ready for that. Okay. That long service, okay. Good, good, good. Long service, good. Only thing, to be, to be. Oh, I think many many senders smash, huh? I think smash senders. Jumbe, jumbe. when the players still weren't back on the court and he couldn't punish one pair more than the other because <laughs> nobody <laughs> was there nobody was there <laughs> Just 
watch this from Ely. And how quickly the shuttle goes down and how steeply. You don't need a big swing of the racket. Not when out the net. Sonoda is uh, playing here across the body of uh, Ong Yu Sin. Try to have a look at this one. But this is one of the first ones that's got some angle. Otherwise, they're all too straight. Yeah, I agree. asking them to do attack the centre. That's what he said at the uh, interview. Doubles with Lady Shahikashino. Oh! That's the one. That's what we used to seeing Kamora do. Yeah, really strong follow-up here. Oh, you see, it's not seeing him coming. He's uh, having uh, his back too much to the uh, net, and therefore he just sees coming in. He really launched himself towards the net. That was a really good commitment. Yeah, and there too. get the edge and then straight, the Malaysians came straight back again level it's only four points and four points can be closed very quickly Shots. 
So now just two points the deficit. Oh, that was going wide. Yeah, that's clever. Nice interception. And in an even better placement of his intercepted shot, that one towards the left hip of Sonoda. I know we have placed uh, the technique of uh, Tiwigi on a, a number of occasions in this match, but to me, he has been the outstanding player before on the court yeah. in this match. Too loose from Newson. Nakamura is picking up at the net now. He is, isn't he? He is picking up a lot. Two or three shots before he was on his uh, feet again. Yeah, well, that was a concern, certainly to me. Normally, the players now, I mean, they're so agile, they seem to bounce back up again. Just seeing the end of the run, it was the earlier stages to which we were referring. So, a three point advantage for Japan. Japanese side normally physically stronger than the Malaysian side here. Yeah, and three points away from taking this third and deciding game. that rally with a broken string did Tio Iyi. So the Japanese have challenged, have they? What's going on? Here we go. They must have challenged. Miles in. What on earth were they doing? I couldn't believe there was a challenge. Oh, just absolutely extraordinary. And the, the Malaysian pair were also arguing that they thought that the Japanese pair touched the shuttle, but it's just this in the end because it was clearly in and Malaysia have got the point. Most extraordinary challenges I've ever seen. Just one point in it now. the string of his racket uh -huh. on you sing but his partner he saw it and yeah. he really urged him forward well 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 back level close 
close to the three-point deficit. He's called to his partner, broken the strings. E Yi immediately moved back. Suddenly, <laughs> he's a tall man, Rosman Rasak. 18 all. Another flick. Too early. Still need another two points. serve in a situation like this. It was a flick. Both going for the same shot. Yeah. But I think uh, the record of Angu Singh actually hit, uh, hit to Yi. On the chin. Well, let's see how bad it is. Oh, he kicked him. I think he kicked him in the chin. It didn't look good. Oh, what a sad wave. Well, this if match it, hasn't if, finished yet. If this is going to be the end of the match, it's really, really sad. Yeah, because it's been such a good match. Oh, my losing teammates looking very, very concerned, looking up at the giant screen in the arena here. Let's see if they can get any close-ups of what's happening. Oh, personally, I prefer they did what's when a, a player is seriously injured. I think they ought to be given a little bit of. Uh, I, I agree, but that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Well, it may be that it's a serious neck injury, in which case. Is over. The match is over. Yeah, he sort of kicked him with his leg in the on the chin, didn't he? This is not looking good at all, I have to say. This is terribly sad. Terribly sad. We also have to say it's terribly difficult for Kamora and Sonoda because it's such a tense situation. There's a lot of respect between all the top players. They will be concerned about their opponent, but they have to try and keep themselves uh, focused into what they need to do if they need to play another point. But quite frankly, the way he's lying there, I can't see that I, happening. I can't see him either, getting and on his feet again. No, and I don't understand why the tournament referees there don't actually step in and make a decision. Greta Prinslow yeah, from, from South Africa. From South Africa. And Nikos Landemiro from Cyprus. 
three deputy referees. This does not look good at all. And of course, in Babington, Morton, there is no time limit. No, in terms of uh, injury uh, treatment. Medical timeout yeah. in tennis, they, they are allowed a three minute medical timeout. Yeah, you betul betul focus dulu, jangan terlalu slow. Bakasal ini dua poin. Yeah, dua poin. Yeah, he's saying you've got point. keep. Two points, uh, you've you got keep focused. Dia dulu. Ambil masa dulu. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Firm, nah, apa you buat firm? Well, the two Japanese players, I can tell you, are just hitting the shuttle back to one another. But it, it is up to the tournament referees, I believe, Morton, that if they think that the injury timeout necessitates too long of treatment, they can make the decision. They that, can do it. They can stop the match. Stop the match. But so can the coaches and... Uh, the managers on the Malaysian side. Yeah, but they've said to keep focus, which, uh, I mean... Yeah, but I, they, they don't know the extent of the injury. You no, know, and if it is a serious injury, then the, I'm should, sure their first concern would be, be the health. safety and yeah. health of their own players. Should be. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it would be. I'm sure it would be. But the fact that he hasn't moved... He's lying in the same position. Yeah. Well, I wish I'd had a clock on this as to what time he went down. It's about five minutes now. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very unfortunate, but I'm not sure whether this is right that somebody's not making a decision, whether it's the coaches, whether it's his partner, whether it's the umpire, or whether it's the tournament referees. I think somebody has to make a decision soon that he's either got to get up and play on, which I think is very unlikely, or that he has to concede. I mean, how long do you have? Do you... I mean, you can't, you can't have a player having a half-hour mm -hmm. medical timeout. I mean, well, we had a situation at the Olympics where Lisa Ray uh, did her knee in completely, yeah. Yeah. but she still got up yeah. and um, tried to continue. But everybody should have stopped her, but yeah. they didn't. They, they probably weren't sure at that time how serious the injury was. Uh, and she was obviously understood that if she had retired from the Olympic semi-final, then she wouldn't have been allowed to play the bronze medal, medal playoff match. So she was hoping, I guess. But this is a very different scenario. And I do think that somebody needs to make a decision soon. We've got three medical staff around for yeah, they're looking concerned. Well, they're, they're pulling him to his feet. Well, Malaysian teammates on their feet. is 19 all.
eight minutes of the medical timeout and play resumes. Clashed again. again. Dear, oh dear. But they're all right. They're one, all right. Of, one of them's left the racket on the floor, dropped the racket. But I, I can understand why uh, Ong Yu Sin is going back on this occasion because he wants to help his partner. Normally it's not his shot. Yeah. This is normally not Ong Yu Sin's shot, but I can understand. And he hits his arm, as you can see. Yeah, hit his hand. Yeah. It's match point opportunity. For Japan, my oh, goodness, what drama. <laughs> Nick called on the return of serve. Serve here. Yeah, it's tough on uh, Sonoda and Kamura here. It is. It's really tough to recompose. Yes, and they're in the wrong formation. Twenty. A second match point opportunity. For Japan. <laughs> and a second match point is saved by Malaysia. Yeah, he thumps his chest. Play with heart, he says to himself. Well, he certainly is. Again, do you think? Yeah. Yep. Oh, nope. no. Stop. Oh. Yeah, well played. Will it be third time lucky? Because for... with the flex serve, they would have been able to possibly counter attack on the flat attack that's coming from the Japanese here. They are setting themselves into trouble on the low serve. Should have flipped it. So, third match point opportunity. Sonoda, their first ever victory in their third meeting against Ong Yu Sin and Team Yi Yi. But what a match, what drama. In the early stages, what excitement too. Well, there was excitement at the end. And what concern for Yi Yi. And what bravery, what courage to continue after such a very nasty injury. 23-21 in the deciding game. A match officially lasting an hour and 35 minutes. Uh, but, of course, part of that time was the long injury timeout. Delight for Komora and Sonoda because they have given Japan at the opening match of this quarter-final time. Confirmation of the score, 13-21, 26-24, 23-21.
21 in the deciding game.